Hello crochet friends and welcome. In today's video I'm going to show you how to make this crocheted knife and flower accessories to go with your Peekaboo Pals Ghosty. This tutorial is intended as an accompaniment to the Peekaboo Pals Ghosty pattern which is available on my website or Ravelry. To start things off, let's make a knife for our angry ghosty. Supplies needed for this project are a gray and a black worsted weight yarn. Any gray or black worsted weight yarn will do. These are both a just yarn from Dollar Tree and the gray is from their tweed line, which I think the marbling effect that the tweed has gives the knife a little bit more of a realistic look. You will also need a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook needle nose pliers. If you don't have them, you'll probably be just fine. But if you do, I'd go ahead and use them. Scissors, a sewing needle, and floral wire. This is just floral wire I got from Dollar Tree. It is a very thin gauged wire, so any kind of thin gauged wire would work. Now that we've got all of our supplies gathered, let's get started. The first step is for us to cut a length of wire. So we're going to grab our floral wire and bend out a piece straight that is about seven inches long. And I'm gonna cut this with my craft scissors. And now we're gonna take this and fold it in half. So I'll put the two ends together and just kind of basically squeeze it down like this. And now we've got a length of wire. Now that we have our piece of wire cut, we can start crocheting. So we're going to take our gray yarn and we're going to form a slip knot. However, you normally form a slip knot. And then we're going to take our piece of wire and feed one leg of the wire through our slip knot. So now our slip knot and our wire are threaded together. And then we're just going to tighten our slip knot into the bend of our wire. And we've got our little tail there, just like this. So the next step, we're gonna grab our needle nose pliers and what we're gonna do is try to squish the end of our knife into a point with the yarn kind of at the end there. And it doesn't have to be super perfect, but just remember this is going to be the tip of the knife. So we do kind of want it to have a slight edge to it. And I'm going to tug this again just to make sure it's super tight. All right. And now we're ready to start crocheting. So crocheting over wire can be a little bit fiddly. Um, so, you know, you might get a little bit frustrated and that's okay. It's just part of the process. And we're going to take our tail and we're going to lay it through with our wire here. We're going to pick up our hook and now we need to get our yarn onto our hook. So I'm just going to go here and pull around kind of a loop and it's going to, the yarn's going to kind of swim and that's okay right now. Okay. Don't, don't stress. And we're going to slip stitch kind of like chain and tighten it up. It's not going to look like anything right now. Don't worry. Just keep and trust the process. So now we've got this little loop on our hook here. We've got our first little chain and we're going to go around the wire and treat this as though this is the active stitch. So it's like we're going into our stitch. We're going to go under the wire and we're going to yarn over and pull around to the front and then I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through the first loop and then I'm going to kind of tighten a little bit and then I'm going to pull through this other loop and that's just because I want my stitches to get real tight at the first bit for our knife here and this is what it looks like so we're going to do another single crochet so same way we did before, we're going to go around the wire as though it's our stitch and then yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull through. And if you want to walk through both little loops on your stitch, I'm sorry, on your hook um, slowly like I did there, 
Um, that's just my tactic to try to keep my stitches nice and tight is to go one loop at a time. Okay, so now we've got a couple of single crochets and it's got a, a kind of a point going here, we can see. So we're going to start increasing the size of our knife blade with uh, larger stitches. So we're going to half double crochet. So we're going to yarn over and then go around the back of the wire, grab our yarn and pull it around the front of the wire, yarn over, and we're gonna walk our hook through all the loops on our hook again here like that so i had to hold it that was probably the not the best visual let me scrunch it a little and there you can see it started to get a little bit bigger so we're going to do another half double crochet we'll try to show you a little bit easier this time maybe i won't hold the stitches so badly <laughs> we're going to yarn over and we're going to go around the wire grab our yarn, pull it around the front of the wire, yarn over, and then pull our hook through all of the loops there. And there you have it. We're gonna scrunch our stitches down a little bit. And as you can see, the blade's starting to slope in size and now we wanna get bigger. So we did our kind of slip stitch here, our chain. Then we've got two singles, two half doubles. So we're gonna move on to a double crochet this time. So we'll yarn over, go around the back of the wire, grab our yarn and pull it forward. We're gonna yarn over and go through two of the loops. And then we're gonna yarn over and go through those final two loops and pull it tight. And you can see we're starting to get a slope of a diagonal blade getting bigger, we're gonna do another double crochet. So again, yarning over, going around the back of the wire, grabbing our yarn, pulling it around the front of the wire, pull through two loops, one and that's two. I'm gonna give the yarn a little tug there and then we're gonna do two more loops and give it a little tug scrunch our stitches and there we have you see our, our knife's getting a little bit bigger now and you know you can choose to stop wherever you like um, and make a really short blade you can go longer and make a bit of a bigger blade i kind of like to make it look more like a big long chef's blade so we're gonna do one more double crochet same as we did before pulling through two loops kind of give the yarn a tug pull through those last two loops. So now we've got our chain, our two singles, our two half doubles and three double crochets. And to finish this off, I'm gonna do a triple crochet. So we're gonna yarn over, yarn over again. Okay, pull around the back here, grab that yarn and pull it forward. So now we've got three loops plus our working loops so of four total. We're gonna yarn over and pull through two of these loops. Give it a little tug. Yarn over, pull through two more loops, and then yarn over and pull through those final two loops there. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a tug, make sure our stitches are tight. And this is our blade. So remember we had our chain, two singles, two half doubles, three double crochets and now our treble. I'm gonna stop here. This is what I usually do for my knives for the ghosties. And I am going to chain one, two, three, and I'm gonna make them kind of tight chains. And then we're going to slip stitch to the base. So we've got our three chains and we're gonna go here. We're gonna go around the wire, grab our yarn, pull it forward, and then we're just gonna pull that through the loop that's on our hook here and tighten it, okay? And now we've got our gray part complete here. Let me straighten that out. And the great thing about wire is if it bends a little bit while you're working with it, it's okay, because you can bend it back. And this is the blade of our knife. So now we've got that finished. We're gonna pull a, our working yarn up through here We've got our loop pulled through. I'm gonna take my scissors 
and I'm going to cut my yarn and we're going to pull that through here because our gray part is complete. And now it's time to move on to the black. Now it's time to start the handle for our cute little blade. So we've trimmed our tails on the gray yarn down so they're not as long to help us work with them a little bit better, as you can see here. And the next thing we want to do is grab our black yarn. So I have black yarn here, formed a slip knot in it, and I'm going to slide it over the blade just because it's a little easier to get that over than to pull over the tails. And we're going to get that up to the base of the blade here. And we're going to tighten this. And we want to get it as close to the blade as possible. So I'm going to try to get a little bit smaller of a loop. Grab my little tails here and pull that tight. All right. So now we've got our working yarn on one side and all of our tails on the other side going down the wire. And what we're going to try to do is wrap this around a little bit to secure these tails inside of this black tail right here that we have from our yarn that we just attached. So I'm just going to kind of loop this around here like this. And now that we've gotten a bit of it wrapped, we don't want the uh, gray yarn to stick out at the ends. So now that we see how short we need it, we're going to trim up our tails here. And I think it's just a little easier to do it that way um, than trimming them that short at first. All right, so we've kind of secured it somewhat inside of our little yarn there. I'm going to pull the yarn through my wire and kind of twist the wire just to help hold a couple times, just to help hold this yarn in place a little bit, okay? So now we've got our kind of gray tails secured underneath this black wrap. We're gonna turn this and grab our crochet hook. And now it's time to start crocheting our handle. So similar to what we did with the blade, we're going to treat the wire as though it's our working stitch and we're going to work around it and we need to get our yarn onto our hook. So we'll go around the back, kind of just grab it and we'll do a little bit of a, a loop there to kind of secure it. Again, it can be a bit fiddly. Sorry if the view on that is bad. Um, trying to tighten it and do all of this on camera is a little bit tricky. All right, here we are. We've got our loop on our hook. We've got our wire in our hand here, and we're going to single crochet around all of this to form our handle. So going around the base, grabbing this, pulling it around here, and we want to try to keep our first stitch close to the blade to try to help it uh, mesh. We don't want to have a big gap between those. All right, so we've done one stitch and we're just gonna do more. I usually do like six or seven. So again, we're pulling around the wire, grabbing our yarn and treating that wire as though it's our working stitch. Um, one of the cool things about working on wire is you can kind of scoot things a little bit if you need to. And see like this, this piece pulled up and kind of caught my yarn. We're going to fold it back down, go around the back, yarn over, and pull through both of these loops on our hook and tighten it up and just keep going. Like I said, it can be a little bit fiddly going around wire, but you just gotta trust the process. And if the gray sticks out, it's okay. We'll just bunch this a little bit more. Oop, this is starting to pull. Again, fiddly, don't worry about it. We'll, fig we'll figure it out, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Okay, so we've got, what is that, four single crochets? Let's do a few more. We're gonna go around the back, grab our yarn and pull through both of those loopy loops and let's do a couple more here that was five 
six. that nice and tight. We're going to grab our yarn and pull through this loop. Cut a long tail so that we can sew in our end here and we're going to tighten that up. All right. So put down our hook and uh, straighten this guy out. As you can see things do get a little bit twisted while you're working with it but don't worry. Again, the beauty of working with wire um, is also the downfall of working with wire, is that it bends and you can bend it back. So there we have it. Um, this is our little knife here. Get a different color background there of my hand. And so now we are going to finish up the end here. So we need to trim our wire down to size. It's much easier to work with wire that is longer than you need. If it's too short, your stitches are going to slide off the edge. So there's no way around having extra wire at the end. Um, before you trim the wire, it's imperative to make sure that this is shaped the way you want it to be shaped. Like if there's, if it's squished up and too bunched, this is your chance. Because once you cut the wire, you can't make it longer. It's going to be the, the length that it is. So this looks good to me. This is the length I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim my wire down. I'm going to leave like a quarter of an inch at the end and then we're going to bend it back into this yarn on the handle and we're going to sew around it and we'll show you this process. So I'm going to grab my scissors that I do not care about. That's the imperative part here, not your good scissors. And we're going to trim that and those little wire bits might go flying. I'm going to reach and grab that last piece of wire there. All right, so now we've got our trimmed end right here. And what I'm gonna do is bend it in on itself. So you can see here, I've bent it into an L shape and then we're gonna bend it all the way back in on itself. This is where the needle nose pliers come in handy. So the wire is on top of our black yarn and we're gonna squeeze that to try to tighten it. I'm gonna go from other angles just to make sure that that wire didn't twist. All right. And it's right here, it's kind of hard to see. And now we've got our yarn on our yarn needle all ready to go. What we are gonna do is use our tail to wrap over the end of this wire so that it doesn't poke out and hurt us. Um, or, you know, snag the stitches on your ghosty later when you're using it with your finished plushies. So we've got our tail here and I am going to feed it through our stitches just to try to get it lined up in the place where we want it so it won't slide off the end of the knife. And now we're going to lay it over and then go back through the stitches on the underside here. And we're going to get it tighter here and you're going to use your fingers to try to guide it so it doesn't slip off the edge. Your yarn, you don't want your working yarn to slip over the edge. I'm going to wrap it around here and go back towards where we had the wire because my yarn is starting to move down the blade and we want to go another time over this uh, wire to make sure that it is fully secured. So I'm going to wrap it around there and then again come back through the bottom and then kind of pull tight. And now you can't really see. The wire is right here. You can kind of see the end of it right here, but it's probably not going to snap out. We'll go one more just to make sure. So I've got, I can see my wire here. I don't know if you can because it's green wire on black yarn. But we're going to pull one more time around there. Use my finger to hold it in place. So you can see I pulled it where I wanted it. I'm going to put my finger to hold it. And then I'm going to go back through my working loops of my stitches down here and pull it tight. And just make sure it doesn't slip off the edge there. And now you'd never know. You can't see the end of the wire at all. 
We don't want this to come loose, so what I like to do is kind of weave it back down the handle through the stitches here a little bit. So this, I don't want, this part might get kind of bulky. And if you've, if your stitches made this area thicker than here, uh, you can use this tail now to even that out. So it's hard to tell, but the stitches are a little bit lower here than on either side. So what we can do is wrap our yarn around like we did over the wire and kind of do this to bulk up the handle and make it all even in shape. Um, this project is something, uh, one of those like trust the process kind of projects and it's going to turn out okay even if it doesn't look great while you're doing it. Trust me, it's going to be just fine. You're going to end up with a cute little knife for your plushies. All right, see, and it's a little bit more even there now. And basically this is it. We're just going to weave our end right now while we've got it. Um, I'm going to kind of go, oh, don't want to loop through that way. Yes, there we go. That's what I was trying to do. And I just turned this in a full circle. I'm so, my sewing is chaotic, you guys. You'll have to forgive me. I don't always get to have people watching me do this. I'm turning it in full circles is part of the process. Okay, I'm just going to kind of sew back and forth a bit here chaotically um, to make this tail feel like it's secure. And I'm going to go back through the whole project like that. I think that's good enough. We're going to call it good at some point. You just got to call it. You just got to call it good. Get my yarn scissors here. Trim off that end. And bingo bango. You guys, we have a knife. We have a cute little knife for our ghostie. Now that angry ghostie has his knife, it's time to make a flower for our happy ghost. For the flower, you will need green worsted weight yarn. Any green worsted weight will do. This one is an olive green of just yarn from Dollar Tree. Red blanket yarn or any color blanket yarn. This is burnout blanket in red. Floral wire. Again, this is green floral wire from Dollar Tree. A 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. A 3.75 millimeter crochet hook scissors. Needle nose pliers would be nice. If you don't have them, you could make it work. And a sewing needle. First things first, let's grab our 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and our red blanket yarn. Form a slip knot however you would normally form a slip knot. We'll put that on our hook and tighten it up. And now we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And now I'm going to grab my yarn, pull it through this loop, and then we're going to cut our yarn. Pull it all the way through here and pull it tight. Now we can put down our 6.5 millimeter hook because that's all we need it for. We've got our little chain five and what we're going to do is make this into our flower. It's very abstract and it just gives the appearance of a flower and uh, it's very effective. So what we're gonna do is tie a knot in this and try to keep it in the center on this middle chain, okay? So we're gonna tie a knot here and I like to put my finger in it to keep the space big and try to line up here. We wanna guide it through because we want the knot as you can see here, to be in the center of our chain, like that. This is what we're going for. Okay, so now we've got these two ends, and what we're going to do with them is tie them together. Okay, so we're going to go through here and just tie that once. And we're going to go in and double down. Oop! Don't pull too hard because your blanket yarn will snap. Just heads up. And now this is what you're left with. And it's just a knot of chains, 
but it really gives this abstract appearance of a, a rose. So we've got our little red knot. Now we need wire. This is a length of wire I cut uh, longer than I want it to be. So you want your finished product length plus like an inch, inch and a half. This is about four and a half inches once doubled. So maybe about nine inches long of a piece of wire that I folded in half. And it's got a loose bend here. What we want to do is make that a stronger bend. You can just do this one with your fingers. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, blanket yarn's a lot thicker than our worsted weight yarn. And so it doesn't need to be uh, done with the needle nose pliers. So this is kind of what we're going for here. And we've got our wire pieces and our knot. So what I'm gonna do is feed our wire through the knot, okay? One leg of the wire through the bottom where we tied the two ends together. And you can find a place where it slides through. If it meets resistance, just kind of move it until you can get it through there. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. We're gonna slide that up here to where it's kind of in the center. The, the knot is in the center of the bend. And then what we're gonna do is take these two tails and kind of feed it through this wire as well and then I'm going to take it and try to twist it like twice kind of close to the flower head like that okay and then we're going to take these tails through the wire one more time just like we did a second ago pull them up through the wire we're going to kind of pull it tight here because we don't want it to be poofy And then we're gonna twist the wire like twice there again. One more time, we're gonna pull those through the wire. And then we're gonna twist it a little bit. And this is just to try to help secure these uh, tails down for us underneath our yarn. Um, and we're gonna hide them like we did the gray tails on the flower, okay? So. And you know what, let's do it one more time just to be sure. Pull it through, kind of pull that tight, hold it with your finger and give the wire a little twisty twist. All right. So we're going to trim our yarn down a little bit so it's easier to work with there. And get that out of here. All right, now we're ready to crochet. So we're going to get our 3.75 millimeter hook and our green yarn this time. We're going to tie a slip knot and we're going to leave a big open hole. And just like we did for the knife, we're going to thread this through this way rather than go over this end. It's just harder to get over that end in my personal opinion. Okay. And now our goal, like we did when we were starting the handle on our knife, is to keep this green yarn as close to the base of our knotted area of the flower head as possible. So we'll try to lower this loop a little bit so that it's easier to place. And then I'm going to make sure I've got it as close as I possibly can there. And then tighten her up nice and tight. You can crank down a little harder with that worsted weight yarn. It's not going to freaking split on you like the blanket yarn will. Okay, so we're going to do another wrap around here like we did a little wrap around uh, for the uh, yarn in the handle. Um, we're going to do a similar thing here. So we're going to use our green tail to kind of wrap around our blanket yarn to hide all of this red fluff. And you can see here, you can a little bit of it's still sticking through. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and this is where our tails are ending. So what I'm gonna do is trim the yarn. Be careful, don't get your wire. And we'll do this one a little bit longer than the other one was.
waffle waffle oh it's starting to turn into shed city you guys shed city population us okay let's trim it let's trim it there we go it'll be fine don't worry don't, don't freak out stop freaking out it's gonna be fine um so here we're just gonna keep wrapping like i said don't freak out it's fine we're gonna wrap those little fluffy tails no one will ever know no one has to know what we did okay oh i went a little too far up let's bring this back down so we want our tail to be close to the end of the wire. We're gonna pull this guy through the wire. We're gonna twist the wire a little bit. We're gonna pull this through the wire again. And we're gonna twist the wire again, just to try to help us hold this stuff in place while we crochet. All right, it's a little ugly. Don't be discouraged, okay? This is fine, it's fine. This is fine. <laughs> So we got our crochet hook and we're going to get a loop onto our hook. Same as we did before, we're gonna take our hook, go around the back, grab our yarn and pull it around the front. And now with this one, we just wanna to try to keep it as close as possible to the head of the flower, just for congruency and to hide, the, hide any of the floofs that might have been straggling through. Okay, so now we've got our loop on our yarn here. We've kind of slip stitched ourselves down to the base. The first thing we want to do is form our flower on the side of our stem. So we are going to chain three, one, two, three chains. And then in the little back bump of the second chain, we're going to slip stitch and then we're going to so here's what you got this is our next chain right here we're going to go in the back bump of this guy and we're going to half double so we've yarned over we're going to go through here we're going to yarn over we're going to come back through we're going to yarn over and we're gonna pull through all three of those and pull it tight, okay? So here's what we've got. And then now I'm gonna slip stitch into the same chain. Slip stitch. Okay, see what we got? And we're gonna tighten that up. We're gonna pull our yarn. We got a little nub for our flower here. I mean our leaf and now we're going to continue single crocheting down the wire to form the stem okay so same as we've done for the handle and everything else we're going to go around the back grab our yarn pull it around to the front yarn over oh yarn over <laughs> there we go pull through both hooks sorry slipped off screen there slide this down tighten up and if it's not perfect don't worry we're gonna fix it trust me trust the process it's gonna be okay okay and we're gonna keep tightening our hoops here like that single crocheting and you can see a little red again don't worry it's fine don't worry it's fine we try to shimmy our stitches a little and then keep single crocheting so that it's three single crochet. Four single crochet. And like I said earlier, it's fine. If you need to walk your loops through your hooks one at a time um, in order to get them through. Go as slow as you need to go. It's not a race. All right, another single crochet. Just gonna keep single crocheting and it's it's up to you how long you want to go with this. So you can make a little short flower. You can go for long stem roses. I usually go longer than this. So I'll show you where I normally decide that that is enough. We'll do a few more around here. And two more. Let's try two more. Oh, 
Okay. I think that's pretty decent. Let's go, let's go one more. We'll do one more. Because the tail is sticking just a little bit right there. Let's see if we can try to do one more little single crochet around the edge there while everything twists on camera. Okay, there we go. So similar uh, to our knife, we've got everything we need. We're going to pull a loop up through and then we're going to cut our yarn leaving a nice long tail so that we can sew our end into the rest of the stem. All right, so there we go. Let's trim these up and uh, get cracking on the rest of this flower to finish it off. We've threaded up our yarn needle and we are ready to start sewing. So same thing, we're gonna go through our working stitches just to move our yarn tail into a more favorable position for sewing. And then we're going to wrap around the back here and I like to hold it in place with my finger so the yarn doesn't slide when we're tightening. And I'm gonna go back through that first stitch again. And tighten it down and then we're gonna do that one more time, put our hand over it. I'm gonna take it through the second stitch just to try to distribute that around there and keep it from sliding off the end. And now I'm gonna go back towards the wire And I'm gonna check, it's kind of hard to see. You can kind of see the tip of it right there. If we wanted, we could kind of go around the back of it there like that. Go through that first stitch again. And then I'm gonna do one more here just to make sure it's all covered. Tighten up. There, you can't even see the wire. Nobody will ever know that it's there. And now same deal, if you want to use uh, this as your opportunity to kind of bulk up your stitch work and make this end look a little more even um, to this end where we've wrapped our ends underneath our work, um, this is your opportunity to do so. If you still had some red poking through, this is your opportunity to fix that. So if if for some reason your red yarn didn't want to behave and it was still poking through and you could see some little red thready bits here, you can weave your tail up to that point and then wrap around there and use this to hide your mistakes. No one has to know that it was a pain in the butt to crochet around that wire. Nobody has to know how hard it can be to hide those tails. It can be your secret. It's between you and the flower. And the ghostie's not gonna tell. The ghostie's never gonna tell. Uh, I think mine looks fine the way it is here, so I'm just gonna try to start like weaving in my end here and kinda just go a little back and forth, making sure not to go in and out in the same place. And I wanna kinda use the uh, friction of all the yarn to hold this tail in place. Um, remember, this is gonna get a, exposed to Velcro, so your ghostie is going to be ripping in and out of this thing um, with the Velcro that you put on its hand if you've gotten to the point where you're trying to make an accessory for your ghost. So I think that's sufficient. We're just going to pull our needle out there. I like to hold my work against the table and kind of pull up to make sure that I've gotten the tail as much as I possibly can. And there you have it. Got a little flower and our little faked out rose for your ghostie. Thank you so much for watching this video tutorial on how to make a knife and a flower for your Peekaboo Pals ghostie. If you enjoyed it, please like the video. And if you'd like to see more crochet content from me, please be sure to subscribe. I'll be uploading more crochet videos and tutorials in the near future. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.